Hi, this is Alonzo Bowden, and I want to welcome you to episode 299 of my podcast, Who's Paying Attention? That's right, I'm coming up on 300 episodes, which amazes me. Anyway, the podcast is now brought to you by ExpressVPN. Now listen, there are certain times you need privacy. Using the bathroom, you close the door, right? You want privacy. You're at a store trying on clothes. Remember that? Remember going to the store trying on clothes? You wanted privacy. Close the door. Close the curtain. Well, guess what? When you're on the internet, you want privacy. And that's why you need ExpressVPN. Now, did you know that your internet service provider, Comcast, Verizon, Spectrum, whoever, they know every single website you visit? And they can sell this information to advertising companies, tech giants, and they use your data and they target you and on and on. You know how it works. You get all the spam. Well, ExpressVPN puts a stop to this. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that your online activity can't be seen by anyone. I use ExpressVPN. I used it when I was overseas to avoid getting hacked and, and my information stolen. You know how that works with the dark web and everything else. I have an Express VPN on my phone, on my laptop. It it's, covers everything. And here's the thing. Using Express VPN is easy. You fire up the app, you click on one button, and you're protected from spying eyes. So listen, if you're like me and you believe your online activity is your business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash Alonzo today. That's right. Use my exclusive link. E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Alonzo, A-L-O-N-Z-O, and you get an extra three months free. All right. ExpressVPN dot com slash Alonzo. Protect your privacy when using the Internet. OK, so let's get into it. Um. As we all know, COVID is spiking all around the country, different states having different numbers. Uh, you know, I'm in California. We're having spikes here, uh, the upper Midwest, the Dakotas and, and Nebraska and all of that. They're having bad numbers. It's happening everywhere. Some people say it's because of cold. It's getting cold outside. Others say we're getting lax on our activity and protection, whatever. Listen. Things are happening. I, I am getting canceled. Not in a good way. Not like the cancel culture would be nice enough to say I said the wrong thing and get me some publicity. No, I'm getting canceled as in shows are being canceled. Uh, my December, uh, my December is pretty much gone. Yeah, I had um, Denver first weekend of December that got canceled. I was supposed to go to Philly. That got canceled, so uh, it's happening. And 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 listen, I'm okay with that. I get it. It's not just me. It's happening to everybody. But I'm just saying that things are spiking, and it's it's not good. So here, as you know, I live in sunny Southern California, and what we're dealing with here is uh, what are they calling it? They're calling it a curfew shutdown. I think the California curfew. Yeah, that, that's basically what it is. So what's going to happen here, and I, I don't know where you live or what's going on, but starting this weekend, uh, restaurants, breweries, wineries, and non-essential retail establishments will be barred from providing outdoor service between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. So we, we've we had no indoor dining at restaurants for a while, but now they're saying if you're outdoors, you got to shut down at 10 because, you know, the coronavirus don't work at night. It's a daytime virus, so there's that. And outdoor social gatherings should be limited to three households with a maximum of 15 people. Uh, businesses allowed to operate indoors like retail offices and personal care establishments, aka nail salons, will be limited to 25% capacity and so on. Um, it, it, you know, it's okay. It's reasonable. Uh, what's the big problem with it? Well, I'd say the big problem with it would be our, our fair governor, Gavin Newsom, who, you know, just a little bit of a do as I say, don't do as I do. Yeah. Gavin Newsom was at a party and <laughs> it was uh, a birthday party for, let me, I'm looking at it now. It, it was a very important. It was a birthday party in Napa 
and apparently they were indoors together, not wearing masks and so on. And they said that, you know, that it was chilly outside or whatever. And they had to close the door. They thought oh, bullshit. All right. They were, they were busted. Gavin Newsom was now here's the thing. I don't really care in the sense that he did it. What I don't like about it is this gives fuel and credibility to the anti-maskers. See, now the anti-maskers, well, you were doing it without a mask. That means we can go anywhere without a mask. See, that's the problem when you do something like this. Oh, and, and don't think this was the only one because there was also a group of legislators. And I know you're, you're actually going to find this very hard to believe, but there were a group of lawmakers who accepted free trips to Hawaii, you know, for... Uh, <laughs> What's this thing called? It, it's a lobbying conference. Uh, the the Independent Voter Project. Yeah, that's the ticket. The uh, Independent Voter Project. Yeah. Sorry, I had to put a little liar on that one. At the Fairmont Kialani Hotel in Wailea, and some legislators' travel expenses were picked up by the hosts. Well, imagine that. So there were up to 25 California lawmakers in attendance and lawmakers from other states and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. So, so you know, you're telling us that we can't go to the nail salon while you accept free trips to Hawaii and people wonder why you hate politicians. And just so you know, it, it, I'm telling you, it's not just the right wing. I ain't too crazy about the left wing. I like them a little better, but they're still politicians and they still do stuff like this. And and this is horrible. It's a, it's a horrible example. It, yeah. No, it's not ex as extreme as Trump and the cult, all right, which I'll talk about in a minute, but it's still a horrible example. Listen, if you tell people that they have to stay home, that they have to make sacrifices, that they have to figure out scheduling, if you're telling them not to get with their family for Thanksgiving, not to travel, et cetera, et cetera, because we're trying to limit the spread of the virus, that's fine. But don't tell us that shit while you're going to big expensive dinner parties in Napa Valley or taking free trips to Hawaii, all right? Just don't, just, it's ridiculous. Um, again, not as, not as bad as the cult. How deep does the cult run? I'm sure you've heard this because this has been all over the news. Um, South Dakota, high rates of COVID-19. You know, they, they had the, the uh, Sturgis rally, which turned into a national spreader, et cetera, et cetera. Jody During is a nurse in South Dakota, and she works where with uh, people who are literally dying from the virus on on ventilators, and so, and she said, uh, "quote They tell you there must be another reason they are sick. They call you names and ask why you have to wear all that stuff." Because they don't have COVID because it's not real. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Somebody's dying. They can't draw oxygen into their body. And they're calling the nurse names and saying COVID isn't real. And this woman, this saint, is still providing care. Let them go. Let them go. Listen, I had an experience this past week. Um, and, and some people reached out because I... Wrote about, I posted about it on Facebook. I had a friend and we used to work together back when I was training airplane mechanics. He was another instructor. Uh, when, we, when they shut down and the layoffs and all that, he went to the plant in St. Louis. I left the business. But anyway, we stayed in touch. And whenever I was in St. Louis, he would come to shows and we stayed in touch over the years. And this guy, very ordinary guy. And when I say ordinary, I, I wrote this. He's ordinary statistically. He's extraordinary to his family. He's dad. He's husband. He's a he, working guy, two kids, I think one in college, one out of college, w married 20 some odd years. He, <clears throat> statistically, he's middle America. He's America. I just saw him in August. Uh, two weeks ago, another mutual friend sent me a thing saying that he wasn't doing too well. He was on a ventilator. He's suffering from COVID. And then uh, the following weekend, his wife sent me a message that he had passed away. And it, it floored me. It knocked the shit out of me. Um, because 
he's a guy. And we have over 250,000 of these people. Now, I have no sympathy for the anti-maskers, for the virus deniers, for the Trump cultists. I have none. Zero sympathy. I don't give a shit. The Herman Cains and, and whatever. And you see these people. So was some guy in Alaska who denied it existed. And yeah, if, you, if it's real, shoot me up with it. He died. I don't give a shit about them. Other than they're spreading it. They're spreading it to people like my friend. And, and I'm, I'm not saying he got it directly from them. We don't know. Obviously, he got it from somebody. But the virus is real. And we need to contain this until the vaccines. We're getting really close on the vaccines. It looks like vaccines, will. they're looking at possibly starting the vaccines in December um, or January. The, the issues uh, with the vaccine are the distribution, who's going to get it and how. Um, they're saying that these first COVID vaccines could be authorized by the FDA by next month and distribution will start 24 hours later. And another vaccine could be authorized a couple of weeks later. So they expect enough vaccine for 20 million people to be able in December. And the question is, who's going to get it? And they're talking about a jumpstart group, people who risk their lives to care for the sick, uh, which would be like this nurse in, in South Dakota, absolutely. Um, people who keep society safe, yeah. Okay, now we're looking at a gray area and um, first responders, cleaners, ambulance drivers, yeah, I'm all for them. Then they say there are three other priority groups before the general population. They're not saying who those groups are. Uh, rich people will be one. And then there's rich people. That'll be two. And I'm going to go with uh, rich people for group three. Um, there'll be athletes. There'll be celebrities, uh, politicians. The, 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 yeah, they'll definitely get themselves. But it is what it is. But in the meantime, again, I, I don't mind the inconvenience. I had planned a trip this weekend. I'm not going to take the trip because of the new shutdown. Um, you know, you guys know, I love motorcycles, the ultimate social distancing vehicle. I'm alone in a helmet, fully covered up gloves. I ain't breathing on nobody. I ain't touching nobody. I could ride all day long, but I was going to go somewhere and, you know, travel involves hotels, restaurants and all that. So I just say, eh, I'm not going to do it. And I'm really kind of bummed because it's supposed to be a warm weekend here in the Southwest. But since I'm not the governor, I'm not going to go. Uh, he did not invite me to the party. They did not invite me to Hawaii. I feel somewhat slighted, but I'm going to, I'm not going to go because I believe this is real and the, the restrictions are a pain in the ass to everybody, but the, the people who fight them and the people who complain seem to forget that it affects everybody. Nobody's happy about this. I'm not happy about work being canceled, but there's, there's millions, millions of people unemployed and I'm lucky. I'm, you know, my rent's paid and I'm eating. So I ain't doing too bad. Honestly, this is a bottom line, you know, and, and it's a shame that some people are suffering more than others, but that's a society. That's how things work. But those who deny it exists. I was talking to somebody who's in recovery, who denies the virus exists. That blows my mind. How you believe in alcoholism and addiction, but you don't believe in a virus. Now, there are people I've listen, I've been in recovery over 30 years and I've always heard people who argue it's not a disease and this and that. And I don't have that fight with them because it's up to you what you want to believe. I just know what works for me in recovery. But to be in recovery and say that this virus isn't real, that kind of blows my mind. But whatever, believe what you want. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how this plays out. I, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I uh, don't know where you, I hope to be in Arlington Thanksgiving weekend. I always work the Arlington Draft House. As of today, I'm scheduled. Who knows what will happen tomorrow? But anyway, have a happy Thanksgiving. Whether you see the family or Zoom or, or do some other connection or however it works, wherever you are, I, I wish you the best. But I wish our leaders would do as we do rather than telling us one thing and doing another 
and being the typical hypocrites. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> Trump is still counting. They're still counting. They're still trying. They're upset. They're mad. They're, they're whiny. They're, they... Giuliani gave some nonsensical press conference today. I'm sure you've seen the pictures. His hair dye was dripping down his face. Here's the thing, man. If you got an old car and it's leaking unknown fluids, you, 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 you put it to rest. You get rid of that car. Giuliani is now leaking unknown fluids. Can we get rid of him? Here, here's the thing, though. This is, this is you know, and, and they want to do recount. They did the recount in Georgia. I think they found like 800 votes for Trump hadn't been counted, even though he lost by 14,000. But they found 1,200 that hadn't been counted for uh, Biden. It was something like that. It, the numbers don't matter because it's not changing. The only good thing about these recounts is watching Trump lose again and again and again. If you enjoy that sort of thing, you can watch that. But I've been talking about this. I was talking about this with some friends today. This Fox News thing, I'm not sure what's going on with Fox News. Because, okay, so Fox News airs Rudy Giuliani's melting press conference and Giuliani's talking about this this fraud and he knows crime he can smell it he should be able to smell it he works with a bunch of criminals he's around a bunch of crime and corruption all day long but anyway he knows it he can smell it blah 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 so after all of that Kristen Fitch Fisher who's a correspondent for Fox News says quote well that was certainly a colorful news conference from Rudy Giuliani but it was light on facts so much of what he said sim was simply not true or has already been thrown out in court. So Fox News is airing the Trumpers bullshit and then saying it's a lie. But it's Fox News who created the I ah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> when a liar tells you he's lying, what does that mean? You know, this is this is just insane, unprecedented territory. Some of the things they're trying. Trump had the, this one doesn't even, I don't even know how to explain this, but basically Trump told Michigan's Republican legislative leaders to come to the White House. And the Senate Majority Leader and House Speaker from Michigan, they agreed to go. And basically what Trump is trying to do is to get them to fire the electors, the people who certify the election, and then hire new ones who are loyal to Trump and overturn the results. And uh, they're like, no, not only can't we do it, it's probably illegal. And these people don't want to go to jail. Um, enough. Enough. Uh, let's see. So in Michigan, Biden won by over 150,000 votes. That's 14 times the margin that Trump won by in 2016. So they're like, we can't just ignore 150,000 votes. That's a clear majority. And not only that, the, the other thing about it is that Biden also won the popular vote. You know, we, we've got Kellyanne Conway, who, yeah, who, here's the thing. Is this going to be my new thing? I am keep saying here's the thing. I'm sorry about that. The internet is forever, people. We've had this talk. When you say something on the internet, it doesn't go away. So in 2016, when Kellyanne Conway tweeted that uh, Trump's 306 electoral votes to Hillary Clinton's 232, she said it was a landslide. It was a landslide. It boomy. What a a blowout. It was historic. Guess what? Guess what? Biden beat Trump 306 to 232. The exact same numbers as that historic landslide and blowout, Kellyanne. And to complete the full circle of bullshit, and, and I just love this because this is, it's symmetry. Um, Kellyanne uh, McEnany, are they all named Kellyanne? I don't even know what her first name is because I never pay attention. You know who I'm talking about. The press secretary. So Trump 
his followers did the quote million MAGA march. There weren't quite a million MAGAs. There were about 10,000 and it was some extreme Republicans. Uh, the Proud Boys showed up, some of the Boogaloo Boys. They started fights and started trouble because oddly enough, the, the you know, Barr, um, Attorney General Barr, the police weren't necessary to, to stop this. I mean, when the BLM people stood out there peacefully, you had to get tear gas and rubber bullets and clear the square and get them out. When the um, Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys are beating up people because they carry a sign, somehow the police don't notice. I don't know. I don't know. I think they, they say I'm the problem. But anyway, McEnany, and, and this is great because this is full circle, she lied about how many people were there. Now, if you remember at Trump's inaugura inauguration, inauguration, they were lying about how many people were there when he was claiming it was bigger than Obama's, it was the biggest in history, blah, blah, blah. And they were showing pictures of Barack Obama's crowd and they showed pictures of Trump's group, okay? Because that's what it was in comparison to the crowd Obama had, Trump had a group. You know, maybe they just can't do math. They can't count electoral votes. They can't count people. So anyway, oh, Kaylee, I called her Kellyanne. Kaylee McEnany. So so here's, here's how this lie grew. There were about 10,000 people there. That's by all estimates people. So about 10,000 people. So that turned into um, tens of thousands. And then from tens of thousands, uh, okay, so the, Trump people said it was tens of thousands. Then the next thing, uh, Trump said it was hundreds of thousands. And McEnany said, you know what? It was more than one million. So yeah, so that crowd grew from Saturday to Sunday to Monday. <laughs> but I think it's great. I think it's symmetry for her to be lying about the crowd the same way Spicer did. And perhaps she should run under the bushes. And next season, we'll see her on Dancing with the Stars. I don't know how long this is going to go. I tell you, it bothers me because it is such a tremendous waste of money and time to keep dealing with these lawsuits and the, the fake voter fraud stories and all of that. Uh, a waste of mental energy to have to have these arguments again. The media keeps covering it like it's news and it's bullshit. It's not news. And... Um, it's getting in the way of the country operating until they, they certify this and make it le make it real. Then there's a lot of the transfer of power that should be going on now that won't be able to get done with, with Biden's people. And then instead of Biden coming in up to speed, Trump still thinks he, I, I guess he's been watching his banana Republic dictators because he's like firing people like the assistant uh, Department of Homeland Security head and people at the Pentagon and it's hiring his loyalty. And he think, what does he think? That they're, they're just not going to turn over power? It's the United States of America. For one thing, if you don't want to turn over power, if you're a president and you don't want to turn over power, perhaps you shouldn't piss off the Secret Service, the people who protect you. But over 130 Secret Service people have been affected by the, the White House ignoring all coronavirus protections and some of them got it and it is and it that and the other yeah, they may not want to protect you if you don't want to leave they may help you leave oh wouldn't that be great we've seen that meme going around it's not going to happen but it'd be great but the business of government isn't happening and it's not going to be a smooth transfer and that is a shame and it's going to end up costing millions upon millions of extra dollars and it's going to stop a lot of necessary work from being done. And all of this is because of one baby man's ego. Um, do you think he's the only one? Not the only one. It, it's Republicans. They're, they're crazy. Here, here's a good one. This guy, let's see. Um... Lauren Underwood, a Democrat from Illinois, is projected to win re-election to the state's 14th congressional district. Jim Oberweiss, a state senator who refused to concede, showed up at the orientation. Yeah, he lost. And he just went ahead and went to the orientation. 
they, they they're in it's it's insanity it it's a complete breakdown and disrespect for any rules decorum law i mean this whole thing the, the it started with the fake news when you could deny science or intelligence or truth or whatever by simply saying fake news and it's led to this where people who lost an election just show up for orientation can you imagine that can you imagine <laughs> You're at a job interview, and you know it's down to two candidates, you and candidate A and candidate B, and you're candidate A. Now, you go through the interviews, you do the process, and you know you don't get the call. And you know you didn't get the job because your phone didn't ring saying you got the job, so you have to assume the other person got the job. Can you imagine just going to orientation anyway, just showing up on Monday morning, like, hey, I'm here what the hell are you doing here? Oh, yeah, I'm here for the job. Well, we didn't call you. you didn't get, no, no, that's that's fake news. That's fake news. I, I got the job. This is basically what's going on. I, I posted it this week. I don't know who to attribute this quote to, but I loved it. Society has become so fake that the truth actually bothers people. Coronavirus, the election, uh, the, the truth actually bothers people. That's how delusional our society has become people who are otherwise intelligent i hate that phrase but it's true people who are reasonable intelligent people just decide that this virus is fake that it doesn't even exist worldwide it just does uh, they just decided nope nope the whole thing is fake the entire world is in on it it's all fake the the election the these people running around the election was rigged it's it's like yeah, all of these states, even Republican-led states, red states, Georgia, Arizona, they were in on it. Yeah, they just decided they were going to go blue because what the hell? North Carolina, whatever. you. I, so this is where we're at, where these people, like you can take a lie and make it the truth, which has happened to me personally, and I'm, I'm going to close with a quick talk about that. But enough of all this shit. Is there, is there ever any good news? Yeah, there is good news for me. I'm a Formula One fan. I'm a Lewis Hamilton fan. And Lewis Hamilton, and you know, I was doing this podcast thing today talking about talking to younger comics and new podcasters about podcasts. And they asked about mine. And I said, you guys, you, you who listen, who I love you. Yeah, I do the news and I do some jokes. But you also know that I have these personal things that I like that I talk about that a lot of you probably couldn't give a shit about and I don't blame you but Lewis Hamilton is one of them you know I love Lewis Lewis is the greatest driver now greatest driver of all time he has just matched the record of seven world championships held by Michael Schumacher and don't just trust me on this don't worry Lewis is going to get eight next year but he's got seven uh that is the the most of all time tied for most of all time he has the most all time pole positions by the time he's retired he'll have the most wins in history um by any measure lewis hamilton's the greatest formula one driver of all time which is beautiful because we get to see him drive now there are all people always who are going to argue this one's better that one's better here's someone whose opinion is interesting the queen because historically people in england who have made achievements like this are knighted this is how you become a knight. There's no more dragons to kill, no dragons to slay, no damsels in distress. So you got to do something with impact. Well, Lewis has done that. So there are a lot of people saying, why hasn't he been knighted? Now, the, the queen sent him a message congratulating him, and he thanked her for it. It was very cordial and very nice and respectful and all of that. But I say... The man should be a knight. Now, some of them are like, well, he's living in Monaco. He ain't paying taxes in London. Yeah, neither did Sir Jackie Stewart. Okay, taxes are high in, in England. A lot of very rich people leave England and go somewhere else for, for tax shelters. It's, it's what's done. That doesn't mean he, listen, he claims England. He claims England. All right, he's known as, he's hardworking guy, blue collar upbringing and now the world champion the greatest driver arguably greatest driver of all time 
go ahead and knight him. Don't wait too long. Don't wait for him to end. Just, uh, man, how great would it be if they, they, by the way, he's black, okay? But that, like they got over, most of them, some some people will always hold on to it, but most of them got over that when he just realized, like, he's kicking everyone's ass. It was kind of like Tiger Woods, right? Where initially there was a lot of racism against Tiger, and then they were like, this man is changing golf. And, and then a lot of those people started to respect him. So I hope the same thing would happen for, with Lewis Hamilton, and in a lot of ways it has. So that's my good news for the week. Lewis Hamilton, world champion. I'm happy to see it. You know, when I talk about the lies, I'll just tell you real quick. I had a car accident. A guy made a move that fascinated me. He left the parking lot through the exit. He pulled into the street, made a U-turn, drove back into the entrance. Right in front of me, I hit the side of his car. Put in the insurance claim. My insurance company was like, you're not at fault. Bob, you could see the, the front, the left front of my car was in the side of his car. That's what the picture was. His claim, which we are farmers. Dun, 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 boy, if I ever see that guy, I'll slap the shit out of him. This guy's with farmer's insurance. They're claiming I hit him from behind and I guess somehow twisted his car. See, I hit him from behind, but didn't damage the back of his car, but it somehow twisted, so mine hit the side. Point being, he's a liar, but the insurance company doesn't want to pay. I have a friend who works in insurance claims. She said, this is what they do. They say no, then it goes to an arbit arbitrator, and they ended up paying part of it for you. I, I hate that. I hate that this guy gets away with that move, you know, but it's how it works. And this is what I mean, this culture of lying where truth that really doesn't matter anymore. It's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. Uh, truth doesn't matter anymore in business. Truth hasn't mattered in politics, hell, in my lifetime. Truth doesn't matter in religion. We see it over and over again, these so-called religious leaders just there to take advantage of people. These are places where you think truth would matter, where you, where people still believe, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter anymore. Um, boy, it, there's a joyful note to end the podcast on. Well, let me tell you about my live show. Oh, never mind. Those won't be happening. <laughs> Stay safe. That is my only message. Wear a mask. We've gone through this before. The mask is it's not to protect you. It's to protect you from breathing on other people. We're trying to stop the spread of an unknown virus that is real. I hope tragedy has not hit you or your family or your friends or your loved ones, but it has for a lot of us and it hits hard. And it's the saddest thing to watch somebody at any point in their life it, just to be taken out by an unknown virus. But it's an insult when people say this virus isn't real, as people are dying from it, as frontline workers are risking their lives to take care of it. I look forward to the Biden administration because they believe in science. They put doctors on the coronavirus task force and I hope something will be done. We all do. We want 2021 to be better than 2020. But for now, I ask you, I implore you to stay safe, take it easy, be patient, understand it's not just you we're all dealing with it on some level to the first responders and the people out there grinding and the the essential workers the people who have to work whether you be in grocery stores or in trash and sanitation and cleaning or i don't know directing traffic or what whatever you're doing the, the techies thank you techies so much for for keeping us entertained and in communication you're all essential Let's be safe. Let's be careful. And here's an idea. Let's be nice. Thanks for listening. It's Alonzo. Who's paying attention? You are.